Tuesday. Today was our first day of safety patrols. Me and Rowley don't technically have stations like all the other patrols, so that means we don't have to stand out in the freezing cold for an hour before school. But that didn't stop us from coming to the cafeteria for the free hot chocolate they hand out to the other patrols before homeroom. Another great perk is that you get to show up 10 minutes late for first period. Hello. I'm telling you, I've got it made with this safety patrol thing. At 12.15, me and Rowley left school and walked the kindergartners home. The whole trip ate up 45 minutes, and there were only 20 minutes of pre-algebra left when we got back. Walking the kids home was no sweat, but one of the kindergartners started to smell a little funny. And I think maybe he had an accident in his pants. He tried to let me know about it, but I just stared straight ahead and kept walking. I'll take these kids home, but believe me, I didn't sign up for any diaper duty. February, Wednesday. Today, it snowed for the first time this winter and school was canceled. We were supposed to have a test in pre-algebra, and I've kind of slacked off ever since I became a safety patrol, so I was psyched. I called Rowley and told him to come over. Me and him have been talking about building the world's biggest snowman for the past couple of years now. And when I say the world's biggest snowman... I'm not kidding. Our goal is to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. But every time we've gotten serious about going for the record, all the snow has melted. And we've missed our window of opportunity. So this year, I wanted to get started right away. When Rowley came over, we started rolling the first snowball to make the base. I figured the base was going to have to be at least 8 feet tall on its own if we wanted to have a shot at breaking the record. But the snowball got real heavy, and we had to take a bunch of breaks in between rolls so we could catch our breath. Grunt! Wheeze! During one of our breaks, Mom came outside to go to the grocery store, but our snowball was blocking her car in. So, we got a little free labor out of her. Grunt! Wheeze! After our break, me and Rowley pushed that snowball until we couldn't push it any farther. But when we looked behind us, we saw the mess we had made. The snowball had gotten so heavy that it tore up all the sod Dad had just laid out this fall. I was hoping it would snow a few more inches and cover up our tracks, but just like that, it stopped snowing. Uh Uh-oh. Our plan to build the world's biggest snowman was starting to fall apart. So, I came up with a better idea for our snowball. Every time it snows, the kids from Whirly Street use our hill for sledding, even though this isn't their neighborhood. So, tomorrow morning, when the Whirly Street kids come marching up our hill, me and Rowley are going to teach those guys a lesson. Rumble, rumble. Thursday. When I woke up this morning, the snow was already starting to melt. So... I told Rowley to hurry up and get down to my house. While I was waiting for Rowley to show up, I watched Manny trying to build a snowman out of the piddly crumbs of snow that were left over from our snowball. It was actually kind of pathetic. I really couldn't help doing what I did next. Unfortunately for me, 
Right at that moment, Dad was at the front window. Yeah! Dad was already mad at me for tearing up the sod, so I knew I was in for it. I heard the garage door open, and I saw Dad coming outside. He marched right out carrying a snow shovel, and I thought I was going to have to make a run for it. But Dad was heading for my snowball, not me. And in less than a minute, he reduced all our hard work to nothing. Rowley came by a few minutes later. I thought he might actually get a kick out of what happened. <sighs> but I guess he had his heart set on rolling the snowball down the hill. And he was really mad. But get this. Rowley was mad at me for what Dad did. I told Rowley he was being a big baby, and we got in a shoving match. Right when it looked like we were going to get in an all-out fight, we got ambushed from the street. It was a hit-and-run by the Whirly Street Kids. And if Mrs. Levine, my English teacher, was there, I'm sure she would have said the whole situation was ironic. Wednesday. Today at school, they announced there's an opening for their cartoonish job in the school newspaper. There's only one comic slot, and up until now, this kid named Brian Little has been hogging it all to himself. Brian has this comic called Wacky Dog, and when it started off, it was actually pretty funny. But lately, Brian's been using his strip to handle his personal business. I guess that's why they gave him the axe. Wacky Dog, Brian Little. Hey, Wacky Dog, say something funny. Actually, I have something serious on my mind today. Susan Lim, if you are reading this, Brian is very sorry he kissed your best friend Rachel behind the lockers. He hopes you can find it in your heart to forgive him. P.S. Barry Palmer, you still owe Brian $5, you bum. As soon as I heard the news, I knew I had to try out. Wacky Dog made Brian Little a celebrity at our school. And I wanted to get in on some of that kind of fame. I had a taste of what it's like to be famous at my school when I won honorable mention in this anti-smoking contest they had. All I did was trace a picture from one of Roderick's heavy metal magazines, but luckily, no one ever found it. Don't smoke, or you'll look like me. The kid who won first place is named Chris Carney, and what kind of ticks me off is that Chris smokes at least a pack of cigarettes a day. Don't smoke. It's a joke. First place. Thursday. Me and Rowley decided to team up and do a cartoon together. So after school today, he came over to my house and we got to work. We banged out a bunch of characters real quick, but that turned out to be the easy part. When we tried to think up some jokes, we kind of hit a wall. I finally came up with a good solution. I made up a cartoon where the punchline of every strip is Zoo Wee Mama. That way, we wouldn't get bogged down with having to write actual jokes, and we could concentrate on the pictures. For the first couple of strips, I did the writing and drew the characters, and Rowley drew the boxes around the pictures. Step on a crack, break your mama's back. Yeah, right. Step. Hey, Timmy, your mother slipped on a banana peel. And P.S. She is dead. Zoo-wee mama. Rowley started complaining that he didn't have enough to do. So I let him write a few of the strips. But to be honest with you, there was a pretty obvious drop in quality once Rowley started doing the writing. 
I have been waiting three hours to get a hamburger. Finally, one hamburger, please. I'm sorry, sir. We are all sold out. Faint. Zoo wee mama. Eventually, I got kind of sick of the zoo wee mama idea, and I pretty much let Rowley take over the whole operation. And believe it or not, Rowley's drawing skills are worse than his writing skills. Oops, I stepped in a puddle. At least it's not an acid puddle. Ay, 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 it is an acid puddle. Zoo-wee mama. I told Rowley maybe we should come up with some new ideas, but he just wanted to keep writing zoo-wee mamas. Then he packed up his comics and went home which was fine by me. I don't really want to be partnered up with a kid who doesn't draw noses anyway. Friday. After Rowley left yesterday, I really got to work on some comics. I came up with this character called Creighton the Cretan, and I got on a roll. Creighton the Cretan by Greg Heffley. Hi, my name is Creighton. No, it isn't. Your name is Stuart Pid. Oops, hi, I'm Stu Pid. Har, 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 har. I must have banged out 20 strips, and I didn't even break a sweat. I wonder what is in the cute little box. That's not a box. It's a brick, you dumb moron. Oops, I have been trying to open it all day. Doctor, could I have a new butt? My old one has a crack in it. Creighton, I told you a million times, everyone's butt has a crack in it. Oh yeah, I forgot. The great thing about these Creighton the Creighton comics is that with all the idiots running around my school, I will never run out of new material. When I got to school today, I took my comics to Mr. Ira's office. He's the teacher who runs the school newspaper. But when I went to turn my strips in, I saw that there was a pile of comics from other kids who were trying out for the job. Most of them were pretty bad, so I wasn't too worried about the competition. Girls Rule by Tabitha Cutter and Lisa Russell. Don't walk near our lunch table, Tyler Green. Yeah, you're not even cute. Ha 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 trip. Girls rule. Extreme skaters. I'm going to do this rad jump. Whatever. Yo, dude, watch out for the telephone wire. Here I go. S slice. Darn. Bonk. Ouch. I sure am glad I wore my helmet. The end. One of the comics was called Dumb Teachers, and it was written by this kid named Bill Tritt. Bill is always in detention. So, I guess he has a bone to pick with just about every teacher in the school, including Mr. Ira. So, I'm not too worried about the chances of Bill's comic getting in either. Hey, Mr. Ira, you pooped your pants again. No, uh yeah huh stink lines from the poop there were actually one or two decent comics in the bin but i slipped them under a pile of paperwork on mr iris desk hopefully those ones won't turn up until i'm in high school <laughs>